So Vidya, I thought I'll start with you. Your journey yourself as a uh, in the corporate world. When Edelweiss was started, you were quite involved uh, in building that from scratch. So tell us a little bit of how did that journey lead into actually starting Edelgift? I was part of uh, a group of 10 people. I was the 10th employee of Edelweiss and it was very interesting because we were a very small company. We were very entrepreneurial. We continue to be so. I think over the seven years until 2007 when we IPO'd, I really saw Edelweiss grow and bloom, but also go through the journeys uh, and the troubles that come with building an organization and growing business. It's never easy finding the right people, finding the financial resources. All of that is a very interesting journey. And I felt a lot of what we'd gone through could be translated, that entrepreneurial journey and the, the journey of building an organization could also be translated into our work with nonprofits. As part of my role as C, a CFO, I was also looking at making our philanthropic allocations. And But one of the things, first things that struck me is that more than the money, it is the uh, the capacity building support that organizations need and that's really in short supply particularly when it comes to the nonprofit sector. A lot of the organizations I visited were obviously excellent grassroots organizations, great work, high levels of integrity, great uh, connect with the community but you know issues of uh, HR, is issues of systems and processes, issues of financial planning was something that was impeding growth and scale and we felt i felt that bringing that 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 knowledge that we learned in edelweiss would be of considerable benefit to the work that we did in the foundation so you know there are many kinds of non-profits uh, right there are large ones that need to get even larger medium-sized ones that need to get large but there is a certain philosophy you have about the kinds of organizations you want to work with can you tell us a little bit about that I think, uh, you know, when we started, we had a, uh, we thought that we'd work with young and very small organizations because we felt that that's where really there was complete absence of, uh, of any support. I think the large organizations, which I define as organizations in excess of about 8 or 10 crores of annual budgets, those were the ones that got a lot of attention both from the funding world as well as from the capacity building world. The very young organizations were, had a few mentors like, um, you know, you had Unlimited and Ashoka and organizations like that, that could mentor, you know, entrepreneurs to make that first step into social entrepreneurs. But the middle section, which was, you know, kind of the 25 to 50 lakhs through to the two crore annual budget kind of organizations, were I felt the most uh, neglected and those were the those were the organizations that had the capacity to scale quickly if they got the right input at the right time and so we've always focused we do have very young first time entrepreneurs also in our portfolio but a lot of them are really organizations that need that uh, and also a very interesting life cycle where what you need initially is very different from what you need once you're crossing the two crore three crore boundary and so that's a very interesting sort of spectrum to be in and our ability to work with all of these organizations is very high. And one of the things you also talked about earlier is collaboration. It's important to collaborate with others. So you talked about the collaboration with Toolbox. So Vijaya, tell us a little bit about what is the philosophy of Toolbox and how you both started working together. And Toolbox was uh, started originally in Belgium. Um, founders felt that there was a lot more that one could do beyond venture philanthropy and said that if they could in their own personal capacities go beyond you know cutting checks to actually use their skills which they had acquired um, during their stints in uh, various corporate uh, organizations and deploy it with the non-profit maybe they could really help these non-profits get a better leverage uh, not only from the the deployment of those skills, but also in the deployment of their own funds which they had received from other grant makers. And with that same philosophy uh, was brought to India a couple of years back. And that's how the toolbox story in India began. I happened to meet Vidya at uh, an event when I heard her speak. I felt that there were a lot of um, 
uh, similarities. There were a lot of synergies which which uh, both Edelgave and Toolbox could uh, really explore. And it was a win-win for everybody. I mean, the investees, the non-profits, Edelgave Foundation and Toolbox. It became a, a very uh, a symbiotic kind of uh, relationship. And for me, it just seemed like the two semicircles that made that circle uh, fit. And also, I think the ethos, the the understanding of what Toolbox does, because Toolbox does not work directly with the community. We don't have a community engage. We work with the non-profits and we felt that synergy, that understanding was spot on. I think a lot of times, uh, you know, what you're talking about is in the Toolbox, we you actually help people articulate who they are, their vision statement, what they want to be, what their business plan is. Etc. Because funding is not the only thing that people need. They need a lot of these things also. And we actually have a couple of uh, slides from one of the organizations that you work with. And I think, you know, in a for-profit company, you know, we come up with our mission, etc. And then we go develop ads, we develop communication packages. But a lot of the nonprofits don't have that, that ability because whoever gives the money says, I want my entire money to go to the beneficiary. They don't have the privilege of you know, developing their mission statement or their messages. And I thought we should just show a couple of slides of one of the organizations uh, that you worked with. Uh, so tell us a little bit about what the organization is and then... This was work which we did for Apnalaya in uh, Bombay. Apnalaya has been there, I think, for more than 40 years. So Apnalaya originally was started by the Australian High Commissioner in the uh, almost early 70s. Uh, where, you know, he saw a lot of these slum children in the, uh, and on, on, the, on the roads and not at school and was wondering why they weren't in school and that's how the whole genesis of Apnale began. They basically, um, you know, sponsor the, some of the education the, programs. The orphanage. Sort of. I mean, they have health interventions, they have the uh, Balwadi program. Uh, essentially to cater to the uh, children who were belonging into the neighboring slums in South Bombay. Over a period of time, you know, with the uh, freeing up of the Land Sealing Act and so on and a lot of redevelopment, some of these slums moved away from the, uh, these regions to the outer regions. And today, Apnale works essentially at Govandi, which is on the fringes of the dumping ground and one of the most neglected communities. And I think the whole philosophy at Apnale has really been to kind of make sure that these people are not just forgotten because they are and since they're forgotten if there was a way for them to step in and so they basically uh, have the infant uh, health program they have the balwadis they have an education sponsorship program they have a feeding program and they also have something uh, called as the um, women's citizenship program i think where women from the community, you know, some of their basic rights are taken away and so they've been helping them. When Apnala came to us, essentially, they were like, you know, we're completing 40 years. We've been doing what we do. Is there a way we can do this better? We can showcase what we do better. And uh, that's when Toolbox uh, stepped in and we said that, okay, uh, we know what you do, which is phenomenal, but how do we present it in a language which the rest of the world understands? Uh, and so that's when we said that, okay, let's work on positioning and branding. And so it's interesting. So first two slides you'll see are about what the organization is about. You know, it's about feeding Amran. It's about teaching Raghu. And it's about uh, liberating Lakshmi. This is what the organization is about. It's really interesting to me is to work themselves out of a job. And really, if you look at all of us in this room, our goal really is to work ourselves out of a job. So that's the tone they, they took uh, to develop their ad campaign uh, to do this. And these are some of the ads that were developed. And you can see how you can get some creative minds to come together with a nonprofit who's doing really good work. You can develop the kind of campaign that attracts everybody's attention. And why not do to a nonprofit the same thing we do for a for, a for profit, which is world class, uh, you, you know representation out in the world and I think that's what yeah I mean we're extremely did. proud of the fact that you know all our volunteers do this pro bono uh, essentially and I think that is the crux of what uh, toolbox is all about that we you're finding those people who have the intent 
who have the skills and willing to do this. You know, there's that consistent commitment, which I which I say is a is an essential requirement at Toolbox. A consistent commitment to want to do this, and I think there's enough and more people out there. We just need to find them. And also, I think a lot of times when people volunteer their time, they want to be very specific and say, I have this much time, I can yes. do these things, just tell me what to do. Yes. You know, they don't have the time to go find the right things. So I think from that point of view, what Toolbox offers is very valuable because I can just say, hey, I'm very creative, I can give 20 hours of my time and this is what I can do. And you do all the work to match it with something uh, good. Uh, so Vidya, one last question to you is, you know, we talked about funding, talked about collaborations. Is the third piece of it, which is uh, the resources that come from Edelweiss itself. So can you tell us a little bit about the third piece of this uh, work? I think one of the unique things about Edelgive is that uh, the entire Edelgive team is essentially funded entirely by Edelweiss. In addition, 60% of our um, annual contributions also come from Edelweiss, the rest come from our funding partners. But I think the bigger contribution of Edelweiss is really in terms of the employee engagement programs that we run. So we, I think we struggled with it. It's not very easy in a large corporate, particularly with employees who are very highly skilled but also have a lot on their plate. But I think we, we found our way by uh, figuring that different people need different things to feel engaged. It, it's, there's no one size. And we, we start, started tailoring that. The other thing that became of great interest is field visits because nothing really inspires people um, than, you know, sort of looking at the work on the ground. So we do that, you know, we do six to eight field visits a year. And I think that has been for us the greatest uh, uh, you know, engagement with Edelweiss, the value has really been there. Also, I think in general, I mean, now there is a CSR rules coming and all that stuff. It's very easy to think of it as another line item, but really, if you can embrace it, yeah. uh, it provides, I think, an amazing service to the employees also because, you know, once you get to be bigger and, you know, more successful, you kind of lose sight of what is this journey all about, yeah. you know? And so once in a while to stop and say, okay, all this success that we have is actually helping someone out there. Absolutely. Makes them even more dedicated to yes. what they're doing. Absolutely. And, uh, and I think that's the value of it. So we just wanted to cover the three legs of um, what you're doing. So you've done, uh, can you give us some numbers of how many organizations you supported so far? About 25. We'll close the year at 25. Um, what we try and do every year is, is sort of, uh, uh, you know, at the beginning of the year, really look at the portfolio and we, we identify organizations very selectively. A, a lot of it is around the value that the portfolio provides. Yeah. And I think, you know, uh, how do you, you know, this is the million dollar question people want to know, right? You look at a lot of organizations. At the end of the day, in the due diligence, what is it that ultimately makes you choose? I think it's the management team. It's yeah. the team that is running the organization. Uh, uh, you know, every one of the people that we you will meet out of our investees are all great, but they've also managed to put together a group of individuals around them that are equally passionate and equally committed and, you know, are willing to kind of lay down their lives for what they're doing. I think that, and that is so strikingly obvious when you go and see the work. So that for us is very key. So I want to ask each of you the parting question of what do you, what would you like the future of Toolbox? We have a great collaboration, you're working together, but what would you like to see Toolbox become? I think uh, one is of course, if there's a, there's a non-profit in a city which needs us, we are there. And I think we just need to find that talent and just continue to work and um, along the way build the non-profit so that a day comes when they really don't actually need toolbox. That should be the ultimate uh, um, vision that along the way non-profits get even more smarter than what they're already doing and we're just part of them completely. How about you, Vidya? What would you like? I think for us, if, if we can be, be a hub or a network or a, or a place where we can attract people who come with, like I said, you know, very different strengths and skills, 
um, and we managed to bring all these people together and obviously bring that whole ecosystem up, bring that whole, bring this whole development marketplace in a sense, we can elevate it to a much higher level of knowledge transfer and funds that can then, you know, sort of work around all these organizations. That is really our dream to be that uh, catalyst. And I think it's great to have all of you here because at the end of the day, the purpose is that how can we each be that spokes in the wheel? Because none of us yeah. alone can do this. But if each of us can get the inspiration from each other uh, and have a collaboration that can go beyond uh, anything we can think of, I think we have a great future ahead. So thank you very much. Thank you.